All right, hello everyone, it's Berkeley time, so let's get started. Uh, today is just a demo of React, so I'll just be going over an example of building out a full website through React. And uh, let me go ahead and start sharing my screen for this. All right, hopefully everyone, everyone can see that. So the website that we'll be attempting to replicate is um, Patagonia's or an old design of Patagonia's website. So it's um, the link we have is for the way uh, the Wayback Machine. Kind of just shows you what websites used to look like. Um, I think it's kind of slow in loading right now, so we will just wait a little bit on that. Um, but as for the code that we'll be using, I've uploaded both the starter code to the lab and the complete version. Up on the GitHub, they're both public, so you can go check that out. And uh, if you want to like follow along, or maybe not follow along, but do it on your own time afterward, I definitely encourage that. Um, and as for the final product, it'll look something like this. Um, you can't really click on much of this stuff since we won't be going that in depth. But here's the general layout with the nav bars, the text, some optional buttons, and uh, these kind of clothing categories down here. Um, and then over here is what we have so far, just with the starter code. There's not really much there. And I'll open that here on VS Code. So this is the starter code. It'll have a um, bunch of skeleton and uh, boilerplate code and lots of comments detailing what we want to do in each of the components in order to fully build out the full website. And then over on my other uh, VS Code window, I'll just have like the full. Um, complete version here that I'll be referencing because it'll take too long to actually go through and um, like type out the entire thing from scratch. So you'll see me referencing it here. And uh, it's got all the same structure and everything, of course. It's just um, completely filled out. Um, yeah, all right. Let me check the chat real quick before I get started. Let's see if there's any questions. Um, okay, yeah, so I can, I can get the link to the GitHub repo. And also for uh, extensions for homework, yeah, go ahead and go to add and make a private post for yourself uh, asking for uh, an extension and for which homework it'll be on. And then someone in the course staff will get back to you with that. Yeah, so let me, uh, let me grab the, I'll give you guys the starter one. That's uh, right there. And the complete code is over here. And yeah, a few more questions about the homework. Yeah, if you request the extension, we'll, we'll still take that into consideration for the grading and everything. Don't worry about that. Um, and uh, one question already was about why we have a JSX file extension. So that's all of these files um, as opposed to um, just a normal .js. And the reason is because um, JS is, stands for like a JavaScript extension. And as we see here, we're coding in what looks like practically the HTML that you've been learning, except if you look at everything else, it's mostly JavaScript. So JSX really is a way for incorporating or really embedding um, this HTML looking code within your actual JavaScript. Because these components that we, that we'll be creating in React are like representing um, HTML components, but we do it via these JavaScript like files. Uh, yeah, it should still work, but um, these different file types um, are are more specific to various things that you could be using. So yeah, I'll get started with the uh, the full walkthrough. All right, looks like this is not loaded, but that's okay. Here's the full version again. We have um, looking at the app.js, a header area. That's this top part. The front page, basically this 
mountain nature background along with all the text and all the buttons associated with it. And then the categories, which is this horizontally scrolling area, which features these rectangles, which uh, if you were to click on it, would theoretically take you over to each like sub page of the Patagonia website. Uh, so let's get, let's get started with uh, the header. Over here, uh, you see that there's already um, the flex box created for us. So this is telling us that we want to create a horizontal flex box to um, horizontal flex box to create this kind of bluish banner up top. So we can already see a bunch of uh, the properties associated 100% with the blue color for the background, 50 height, and so on. So these values um, have no uh, special significant meaning. It was just uh, up to the creator's choice to look at the original design and try to figure out how to uh, replicate it, replicate it as like faithfully as possible. So we have all of the normal ones that you would find with justifying content and aligning items to be center. That means all of the text and the words are aligned both horizontally and vertically within the overall rectangle. Uh, you know, font size, font weight, and uh, this right here called padding, uh, so, sorry, called PT, standing for padding on the top. So if I hover over it, it'll give you another hint, padding on top. And the comment is saying, um, to do, add the header values here. So the top bar contains you know, the Patagonia text, the current deal, um, and then a little login button, even though we can't really click on it over here. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and just take a look at what the solution has as it exists, because it'll take a little while to talk about every single thing, but I'll go through them one by one. So if I were to take the first element, which is a box, and start putting it inside of the flex box. And all I need to do is uh, hit Control S, save it, and I'll see the file is saved. We'll go over to the Chrome and see what happens. So already we already have a, as we define a box element with some certain properties, you know, the width, the height, and the, um, this one in particular is called ML or margin left. So I'll hover over there along with the text, Patagonia, San Francisco, California. And even with just that, we've already seen it being populated, but it doesn't quite look like uh, what we want it to be. So let's just see what happens when we uh, get over the rest of the body of this, um, of this component and paste it in. And I'll explain what each of the components mean. We'll get those and the tab is a little weird. And let's do that. So here we have three boxes for each of the three um, portions of what we want, the three pieces of text, and currently uh, two spacers, even though they're not uh, imported yet. Let me go ahead and um, grab the import statement for that to make sure that we have it. And these spacers are a little interesting little component because they don't actually contain anything. There's no opening and closing tag. There's just one singular spacer tag, and they serve to um, be placed inside of a flex box. So remember this original container that's holding and defining our entire rectangle is really just a horizontal, like horizontally directed flex box. And so what these spacers do is they can usually go in between or on the sides around elements, like our boxes that we have here, and just take up the remaining space that everything else does not take. Uh, so we can even look at their description. So a spacer is a flexible flex spacer that expands along the major axis. So in our case, the horizontal axis of its containing flex layout. So it just renders a div by default, but the divs empty, you don't really see it anywhere and just serves to take up space. So I think I've saved it. Let's go back and there it is. Um, we successfully have space in between. So now that looks like our three pieces of text are like on the left side, the right side, and in the middle, even though we didn't need to do any, um, any explicit uh, centering or spacing of these elements, the spacers were able to do this directly for us. Um, let me check the chat real quick. So are there any questions so far about um, how any of this is working or anything I've covered here in just the header part?
All right, uh, if there's no questions, I'll continue on to the next section, the front page. So this is this page is a lot bigger and there's a lot more stuff going on. So we'll just go each uh, go through each part one by one. Uh, first off, we'll just take a look at what they have here for us in the skeleton code. So it looks like we have one large box encapsulating everything. So that represents again this this entire uh, you know landing page that you see when you first come to the website. It's already got some sizing, some images, and some fonts applied to it. And let's read the to-dos. So first, in this flex box, again, horizontal flex container, you want to add the nav bar, including uh, two of the icons. So our nav bar you can navigate through the website with, including our two icons here, a search one, some sort of add icon, as well as, finally, a clickable hamburger icon. And this will spawn a modal with the on-click adjacent to the two previous items. So to demo what it would look like, you can click on the hamburger item. And as you expect, a new menu would pop up. Uh, the background kind of gets faded out a little bit. So make sure you focus what's here. You can put any content you really like here. And generally, there's going to be some sort of close button, maybe an X button, or any other button, really, that you want to redirect anywhere else to the website. And you can also see here that the text says, this modal has been clicked you know, one times for now. If I click out, to close it, open it again, it went to two, I'll do it again, three. So part of our design should be considering how to keep track of the number of times this model has been open and like save that value uh, throughout our different clicks. Uh, continuing on, just as a high level overview, uh, we wanna add boss components for our various pieces of text, like our titles, and also our two buttons for uh, you know, going to watch a video or submit a content. And notice how the uh, the code or the skeleton code is already organized for us in that there are many, many boxes basically everywhere. So even in our header file, every piece of text was um, encapsulated inside of a box, one of these chakra UI boxes. Same thing over here, there's a big box containing many smaller boxes. And that's really because at the heart of it, a box, and let's see if I hover over it, right here, yeah. It says all it does is it renders a div and just gives you some easy to use, nice styling kind of right away. And just like we would normally use divs, which is like to create a division and create like dividing areas of our web page, boxes are really, really great for defining positioning and also defining the sizing. So whatever elements you include inside the box will kind of exist in its own little container. Uh, so you have one question. Those CSS inline style element uh, styles and format are from Chakra Library. The HTML doesn't have such inline styles. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So this entire uh, kind of React app is built using um, the Chakra UI styling library. I can go ahead and show you the website for that. It's over here. You can go to chakra-ui.com get started and they have tons of great documentation showing you how to you know create a whole new uh, React app to include the Chakra UI library. Once you do, you can go ahead and click on components and they've got a ton of you know, out of the box cool features that you can include for yourself. And all of these different things are, are just like there for you. And if you scroll on the left bar, you can also see the kind of more fundamental components that make these things up. For example, Right, like here's the box. It's a layout element in which uh, many other elements are built on top of. So definitely check this stuff out when you want. And um, yeah, to go back to your original question, the inline styles and format are from the library, correct? So if you go to the style system link and look at the style props uh, over here, you can start scrolling and seeing all the different things that you could possibly put to style uh, your components. Right, so M stands for margin, MT, P for padding, all these different things. Yeah, great question. All right, and then uh, back to the skeleton code. After um, all of this stuff in the front page, the last thing we want is to have the modal. So that was the, the clickable pop-up that you saw earlier. And uh, this modal 
already has a bunch of uh, modal specific elements inside of it. That's just chakras, uh, sorry, chakra's way of uh, including functionality, including content inside of one of these, uh, you know, dynamic pop-ups. And I'll show you later on how to fill them up too. Um, and yeah, let's, or oh, oh sorry. Um, for the comments up here, uh, these handle all of the kind of JavaScript side of using the use effect hook of keeping track of variables of state, and of course the event handlers to control what actually happens when you click on the hamburger item when you click the close or the X um, to make it go away. So let's just get started with implementing it. Uh, the first part here is the nav bar. So this is pretty similar to what we saw with the header. It's already inside of Flexbox for us. So that's so that's uh, pretty similar. Let me just go over to what the complete code had. There's a ton of stuff here. Again, I don't want to type it all out all at once, but I'll still explain everything. So let's grab all of this and paste it in. So like we were required to have, Patagonia shop activism sports stories are along the top in our nav bar. Then um, two more boxes serve to um, uh, hold our two icons. Again, these icons are also from the Chakra UI, like big library, they've got tons of stuff, for like almost anything that you might wanna use. These two icons encapsulated inside boxes. So the boxes, you might wonder why the, they're necessary. Why can't we just use the icon? For the icon, we can style them with H and W, which stand for height and width. So that's why they appear uh, just to be this size currently, six by six. But the box itself provides, uh, like I mentioned before, more of the positioning capabilities um, that, like, that you might imagine a normal div might provide you. So the only reason that this icon here is, you know, this far apart from this icon and is, you know, this far down from the top portion is because the box was able to give it some position styling. And finally, the most complicated part is the hamburger icon. There's a red line because we have not defined this variable yet. That's all right. Um, what we see here is, um, let me tab this over just to make it a little more clear. Again, a box. Inside of it is an icon button component. And because it's an icon button, it still has uh, the on click property that most buttons have. And we give it our own function that will define what happens when we go ahead to click on it. It's not implemented yet. And the actual icon that renders, so it's not just you know, a button like this, which is a rectangle, is the hamburger icon. Again, imported from the Chakra UI kit. Uh, continuing on. Down here, I want to add the box components for all of the front stuff. Um, we have our two pieces of text. So I'll go ahead and again, just grab those They're over here. And get that in, make sure all the indenting is OK. Let me just comment that out because it's not going to render without it. And there we are. So just below all of this nav bar stuff, we want to render uh, the pieces of text. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, there it is. So it's working out pretty well so far. Uh, the background is still there. Our nav bar is there. And we now have the two pieces of text. Um, any questions before I move on from any of this? All right, if not, I'll keep going. Uh, inside this, another box, are the two buttons. Uh, like I mentioned before, boxes are great for positioning things. So if these two buttons, you can imagine like an invisible box around them, and that's what gives them their position relative to all of the other elements on the screen. So finding that, I'll just Grab the buttons because the box area is already defined for us. And below the comments, 
it'll put the two buttons. So buttons work in Chakra work pretty much like a normal button that you would think of. You can specify um, sizes, uh, color schemes, white uh, color for the text is black, various things like that. And of course, uh, inside of it you can host the actual text, any spaces you might like, or any more icons you might want to see. And there they are. So that's looking pretty good so far, just like what we saw here. And um, I think I'll skip the modal part for now and just for the sake of completing the front page, add the little, little down icon over here, just so it looks a little better. Let's go find what that was. Again, it's a box with a rendered icon inside of it. Save the file and we'll go check it out. And there it is. Looks pretty much the same as uh, the front page of the complete solution. Um, and then now we'll actually get started with implementing the modal. So let's put this back. Again, on click defines what should happen when we click the hamburger. And button open doesn't really exist yet. So that's what was everything was up here. So I'll go through this part next. Um, oh, I think there's a question. Should I learn chakra since it varies across companies? It's not a universal one. Yeah, so it's definitely um, not a like core or fundamental thing that you like must learn. Um, and I think if you're asking more about like what's relevant for companies, React is like more the more of the the baseline tool that you would want to know. Everything after that, or most of the stuff after that, especially when it comes to styling, it just varies place to place. So you don't need to learn it, but um, in Web Dev at Berkeley, we always like using it here because it provides so many nice features just right out of the box. And another question is, how is the position of each of these components determined? Um, they're all determined in the same way that any other basic HTML element uh, style with CSS might be. It's just a little harder to see. Um, uh, it's a little harder to see explicitly because all of these custom components, the box, the flex, the uh, the modal, all the icons are just wrappers around these initial primitive uh, HTML types. So every time you see something like height or a line or you know margin, just think of Chakra translating those into the same exact uh, styles that we use for HTML and CSS and applying them to the rest of the website. All right, hope that I was able to answer your question. And if none others for now, I'll keep going. So I'll read the comments up here. We wanna add a React hook for whether the modal is open or not. We wanna add a hook for keeping track of the number of times the modal has opened uh, and add a use effect that changes the document title based on whether the modal is open or not. So I don't know if you noticed before, but usually we'll say the title of the tab is Patagonia-home, every time we hit the modal button, it'll change to Patagonia-learnmore. And then we'll also want event handlers for when the button is clicked to open and close the modal. And um, yeah, that is it for, the, uh, for this upper portion up here. So let's go see what that looks like. Again, for React hooks, that's a hint that you should be using um, use state. So let me grab these two and put them over here. There's opened is the you know, true false for whether the modal is open and the count is how many times we've clicked on the button to open it. Uh, let's see what the use effect looks like. That is here. And moving that in, explaining it again, use effect takes uh, takes action, whatever you give, whatever action you give to it, every time a like refresh happens. So if this open variable is true, we're going to set Patagonia, uh, the document title, sorry, to Patagonia dash learn more, else it's going to stay as Patagonia dash home. Um, for the next part, two event handlers. Uh, again, event handlers just take the form of functions that we can define for ourselves, and that's going to be put down later for 
handling the modal. So in each case, let me just grab both of them here. Um, we have button open in this hunky little uh, syntax. Remember this is called arrow notation in which we can just define what looks like a variable, but it's really holding the value of a function. And for button open, we're gonna call um, both of the setters that we got from the use state hook to tell the open variable that uh, the state is true, that we are open, and increment the count state by one, just like we wanted. And for button close, we're just going to change the set open um, set open hook to the value of false. So now if I scroll down real quick to here, this line that used to be erroring out that I had to comment uh, you know, is now very legal because we've actually defined our button open variable or really function in this case, such that when you click on this icon button, it'll know to trigger and run this function for us. And finally, scrolling down when you actually need to implement the modal itself. So seeing how that looks, the various things we need to implement um, in the modal, the actual body, let me just grab all the content. It can be anything you like, really. And it will go inside this uh, modal body section. Let's save that. The footer, again, you can put any content there. A lot of times you use buttons in there to uh, either close it or navigate to a certain other part of the website. And in the footer, we'll add those in. Notice our button close that we defined just now as our event handler is being used as the onclick method for this button. And that just sets opened to false. Um, and one little thing I need to do other than that is to fill out this to do, which is to add necessary fields for the modal open and close. And that is over here and it looks like this. Let me grab those over. And here the is open property, and if I hover over it, it reads, if true, the modal will be open. That's exactly what we want to do. That's how we control the modal to open and close. And on close is the callback function or the function that is triggered to close the modal. And yet again, it's our button close that we defined from before. So assuming I got everything right, let's go over to here. Open it. All right, cool. It opens. We clicked it one time because this is my first time. And close it move around and open a second time. And there we go. So the model has been uh, clicked twice. Whoops. And I can keep doing that because now it has all the same functionality as what we saw in the complete solution. Um, all right. In chat, we have one question about, uh, should I use document.getElementById or a query selector in React app? Or do I basically manipulate HTML elements through state and set state. Um, let me think on what you're asking. Yeah, so in a React app, a lot of the times you'll be wanting to manipulate your website um, and you know make it dynamically changing with uh, the hooks. So you state gives you the variable, but remember that it's not just any old variable that you might have in JavaScript. This variable is actually tracked by React. So it knows what its value is at all times and also knows whenever it changes. So what React does when it realizes that one of its state variable changes is it looks through all of the components and refreshes any of the relevant components that are affected um, by that state variable. So if you want something to change, for example, you had a variable, a state variable for like the background color or like light mode versus dark mode, and you change it from one value to another, React will know about this and accordingly change everything in your code to reflect that new value. So definitely for a React app, you should be using use state whenever you have some kind of stateful variable. Great question though. All right. Um, now, if no other questions for that one, I'll go into the 
last part of the website, which is down here, we want to have all these little cards that you can't really click on them here, but in the real thing, oh, it looks like the, the inspiration website was loaded. You can hover over it and then click to go to that like category of clothing. And in our implementation, we have a little horizontal scrolling feature. All right. And here, so the key idea, the key like takeaway of why React is so useful is that we can define, define a categories component. So that's on here. It's rendered right below the front page in app.js. And because it has so many of these uh, same exact cards used over and over again, maybe just with, uh, for example, a different text, maybe a different picture, even though in this one, they happen to be all the same, is to uh, make a specific component for one specific part of the website. And that's why categories and exists, but it's also a category file that you don't even see in anywhere in app.js because it's only really rendered and placed as a direct child of the cate categories component. And um, yeah, let's read the to-dos real quick. Uh, some missing formatting in the box component. And of course, in the middle are the actual uh, content. What are the category objects or category components that we want to put inside? So let's go ahead and look at how that happens inside of category JSX. Uh, not too much complicated code, which is great. That's our design goal is to have very simple, easy to look at code. Copying them in, uh, you can see that each category is just the exact same component. The only difference is that each one has a different uh, name, um, name property to it. And because it has a different name property, the different value passed in, you can expect that over in the category JSX file, uh, there is in the prop section a name property that we will hopefully be using somewhere inside to change the value of the text, even though they come from the same, uh, the exact same overall template. Um, in fact, I think the only thing we need to do here is just in brackets, use the exact variable name, and it'll render uh, that name as the text found inside the box. So let me tap these over. Um, but I don't think I'm done yet. There's still a little more formatting just to make it uh, look a little neater. Again, moving that in and making sure category is up to date. Yeah, I think, oh, um, let me grab all this extra styling. Paste it in. Okay, um, let's go check back to Chrome to see what it looks like. And there it is. We've got our horizontally, horizontally scrolling uh, feature down at the bottom where each and every component was rendered from the same exact category JSX uh, component file. So same structure with the box, with these certain um, attributes, these certain properties. The only real thing that changed was what it was given, the property that was passed in, which is of course the name or the text used for that category card. And I think that is just about it. The only thing down here is just to give credit to the original Patagonian design. That's that little ugly stuff looking down there. Um, and that's basically it for the coding part of the demo. Uh, there's, uh, if there's any other questions right now, feel free to ask them. I'll be ha happy to answer them for, uh, for a little bit. Um, other than that, this video is being recorded, so the recording link will go up on Ed uh, in a little bit, and you're free to go. Thanks for coming.
Uh, how can you integrate this client app into a server? Um, sorry, could you elaborate a bit, a bit on what you meant by uh, integrate it into a server? And feel free to unmute if you want to also, or you want to continue. You know, like, um, yeah, you know, when, like when the user uh, type in a specific URL for the website, the server is going to send back like uh, the, the index file for that. But like, you know, right now we have like a bunch of code in the React app. So how can the, how can a server like access those files and like um, send back the file to the client? Oh, okay, I see. Um, yeah, hold on. Let me real quick before I answer that. I just need to click through some of the Zoom settings. Sorry about that. 